It is Tuesday, which of course means it's time to answer the questions that you guys send in every single week on the Brennan Place forums at brennanplace.com forward slash forums or in the YouTube comment section down below. And of course, I am your host, Brendan Plays. All right, so let's talk Tuesdays this week. Now, I'm going to say this week's Monday Night Raw was pretty lackluster. Not a lot happened, not really a lot to talk about. A little disappointing, but we still have a lot of questions this week. In fact, obviously, a lot of things have happened this week in wrestling, and we're going to talk all about it. I mean, the Hulk Hogan situation has been crazy, to say the least. It's been out of this world, so... I haven't talked about it in depth yet. I've given a couple of things here and there on on my forums and whatnot, but I haven't really gone into detail what I honestly think about it. So I'm going to do that in today's episode. I know it's really been probably done to death by now, but I haven't done my thoughts. Maybe some of you guys are interested in what I think. But um, before we get there, I just want to thank you guys for last week's episode. It was uh, very good. I mean, last week had a bit of an above the ordinary, uh, extra views, uh, more likes, things like that. So I want to thank you guys quickly for doing that for me. I probably because it was a battleground um, after show, or you know, a little bit of buzz going around about the Undertaker thing. So probably that's why things spiked a little bit, and you guys are more interested. But uh, I want to thank you guys for checking it out. And um, at the moment, we are number six on Spreaker, very very close to breaking that top five barrier. So if you haven't already, go on to Spreaker. The link will be in the description down below. And uh, support Let's Talk Tuesdays on there. You can download the show, you can play the show, or uh, you can also just follow the show. If you do, even if you don't use Spreaker, quickly make an account, or if you have a Spreaker account, just give the show a like, give a few episodes a like, and just follow the show. It'll certainly help us out a lot. So thanks again for you guys supporting the show. Now, this week, and probably last week as well, why have I not been uploading all that much? Haven't done that many videos, and uh, there's been a reason why. And there will be a reason why I will not be uploading pretty much for the whole week. So videos are going to come back probably on Sunday or Monday. So what's going on right now is that um, I've just moved, I'm moving back. Well, I'm in the process of moving back to college. So I'm getting there. I'm making a pit stop. Um, it's my girlfriend's birthday. So I'm staying with her at the moment. So I haven't got any footage really to record. I can make videos. Obviously, I'm making one right now, but... I haven't got any new footage that I any footage that I've recorded other than the backlash pay per view, so I may be able to make that. And the backlash pay per view, by the way, is uh, pretty cool, pretty awesome. So you guys can really are really going to enjoy that. But the backlash pay per view will be probably two parts, so I might split it up in half to try and you know cover for a few extra days. I mean, not uploading, so I'm going to try and get that done out for you guys. So expect that this week I'm not 100% sure if I can get that out but I'm going to try but um, yes so Universe Mode won't be back until probably Monday My Career Mode as well and yada 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 so unfortunately no videos for just a few, just just for a little bit until I move back in officially on Sunday and then I'm back on the grind will be able to stream again so I don't know if I'm going to get on Twitch maybe next weekend I'll get back on the Twitch and that should be fun. So yeah, so things are going to be back to normal. More uploads probably from me coming up. So I'm going to try and upload an episode of everything ASAP just to kind of make up for it. And maybe an upload twice a day or something like that just to kind of get things back on track. So I do apologize for the no videos this week. Nothing I can really do about it. I'm just out of location right now. So trying to make the best out of a, out of a bad situation, I guess. But, um, yes, yeah, so I apologize. I know I haven't did, didn't really do many last week either, so... And that was really because I had a friend over, so I was obviously leaving home. I'm out to move out for the next three or four months. So I, I was leaving home, so I says I just want to hang out with some friends and whatever and uh, do all that before I left. So, unfortunately, I was just a little bit tied up and busy doing that. So I do apologize. But, um, anyways... Before we get into the Hulk Hogan situation, another bit of news dropped this week. And obviously, before we get into Raw as well... W2K16, bit of news. The Terminator is in the game. Now, this is honestly the absolute last thing I would have thought. Never in my wild streams that I think the W2K16 was going to have the Terminator or Arnold Schwarzenegger in the game. So this is uh, this is quite out there. It's kind of different. But um, when I first heard about it, I thought it was going to be a joke. But mind you, I was half asleep when I first heard about it. So it was pretty... I was like, what? what? What are they doing? 
But the more I think about it, the more I think, okay, this is kind of cool because this is something we haven't seen before. It's something different, something honestly that I'm intrigued about. I kind of want to pre-order it just so I can have him. I just want, I just want to know what's his moves going to be, what's his entrance, what is this all going to be? Is he going to have, you know, a sick Terminator-like entrance like Triple H kind of did? Maybe not to that extent, but. Something like that. Is he going to have these cool entrances? Is something, you know, has he done something? You know, have they created something for him to do? So I'm kind of interested and kind of intrigued. And the trailer for it was pretty cool. I did really enjoy that. I know it was only about a minute long. It wasn't any gameplay or anything like that, but it was cool. I thought I, I thought that was pretty well done. I thought the Ambrose thing was cool. And, um, yeah, I really liked it. So I'm kind of sold. I probably will pre-order now. Um, I don't know. So... I'm, I'm tempted, but then again, like, you know, do I, will I really use him? Probably not. Am I really going to get much out of it? Probably not. But, you know, last year, I think, it was, what, it was Sting. So, I obviously, I wanted to have Sting. First time he was in a game. So, that was a big one as well. So, it was a first for that. So, that was a big one. And the year before that was Ultimate Warrior. So, that was also a big one as well. So, it's kind of like, what do they do next to kind of follow that up? And there really isn't many options. You know, what can they really do? There really isn't that much. So having having the Terminator is kind of something. And the way I see it, really, I really I just see this as cross promotion. I know his movie's already dropped, so it's kind of like, well, isn't this a little bit too late? You're not really going to get much out of it. I mean, it would have been cool to have the Terminator in the game. You know, they should have probably done it as DLC or something for 2K15. Have him in the game. You get to play as him. That would have been cool. I probably would have bought that. I thought it would have been. Pretty cool, cross promotion a little bit. So perhaps by the time 2K16 drops, maybe the DVD for Terminator Genesis, I think it is, will come out. So maybe they can do a little bit of a play on that. I don't know, but that's really the way I see it. A bit of cross promotion, and obviously Arnold. Well, he's off WWE Hall of Famer. So for the first time ever, a new WWE Hall of Famer is coming in the game. We've never seen before in a game, so this is great. I guess. Um, but I really, I don't really can't, can't really complain about it. I'm okay with it. You know, like I said at first, not too keen, but now I think about it, thought about it, I'm fine with it. And obviously, like I said, something different. And that's kind of what this game needs, something a little bit different. And something out there, a risk perhaps, is not always a bad thing. And it could pay off. You know, people, you know, obviously Arnold is a very mainstream name. Everyone knows who he is. Everyone knows knows about the Terminator. A lot of us all enjoyed the Terminator. I, I like the Terminator. I liked the first few movies. I thought they were great. I haven't seen the the new one. I was going to, but then I was like, yeah, I skipped it. I probably will check it out when it's on Netflix or something like that. But yeah, so I, I'm okay with it. Just to sum it up, not to drag it on any further. So that's my thoughts. I know a lot of you guys sent me a lot of questions about this one and a lot of questions about this next one, Hulk Hogan. Jeez, where do we even start? I mean, by now you guys all know the details. You know what he's done. I'll just quit quick brief summary Hogan's sex tape yes he for some god unknown reason he made a sex tape now I don't think he made this sex tape in intending for it to be released to the world or you know uploaded to any you know what sites I just think he just made this sex tape or he apparently the rumor is he didn't really think he didn't know he was being filmed I call be bullshit on that I think he probably knew He's just playing... Hulk Hogan is a compulsive liar. The amount of shit he's lied about throughout the time that he's been on this earth is ridiculous. You know, from being a lead guitarist in Metallica, you name it. So I'm not going to go completely into all that, but Hulk Hogan is a very sketchy uh, figure. So he's done a lot of shady things. In this one, was I really surprised? No. But what I... To me personally... I don't condone racism by any means, but it's just, to me, it's a testament of society, where we're at right now. You make one mistake, you're done. It's over. Even Hulk Hogan, you know, a legend, an icon in the 80s, you know, he's done all this and this, you know. I'm sure he doesn't really... I'm going to kind of defend Hulk Hogan. I'm sure he doesn't really hate black people. I don't think he really does. I just think, you know... And you gotta, you got to admit, this was quite some years ago as well. And people do change, you know. Maybe at the time he was frustrated with the situation. I don't know the story. But he has said he's a little racist, so who knows. But, you know, I don't... I just feel as though, to me personally, 
that this has gone way out of control. Should the WWE have fired him? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. The guy has hurt their image, hurt their company, it hurt their stocks. It hurt a lot of things to do with the company. So yes, they can't have a guy like that representing their brand. They can't. You know, his image has been tainted. They can't have that. So yes, he should have been fired, but come on, really? Giving him the Chris Benoit treatment? Are you kidding me? Not even CM Punk got this treatment, and he, you know, trashed the company. You know, he probably did worse for the WWE than Hulk Hogan just saying, you know, the N-word uh, uh, many times. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, this just to me, it's just... I Yes, I, I agree. Fire him, sure. But to erase... Well, to even attempt to erase his name from wrestling history is, you know, just ridiculous. But they've tried. They've removed everything from um, the website. And it just seems to me to knee-jerk reaction. Hulk Hogan, all his things will come back on. And they're going to start... You know, yes, he's terminated and whatever. And no pun intended. But yes, he's gone from the company and whatever. But they're going to... St- once this whole thing situation dies down, they'll slowly, sneakily, they won't really announce anything. They probably won't promote any of his matches or anything anything like that for a long time, but they'll put all his stuff back on and, you know, he'll be recognized again. I don't think he's gone forever. And in saying that, I don't think he's gone from the company forever. I just think at the moment, society right now is just on this whole, you know, politically correct kind of trend. I think that's just how we are. You mean in the 90s, it was all, fuck you, we don't give a shit what you think. Same with the early 2000s, and now, ever since, you know, probably 2010 onwards, it's just been, you can't say this, you know, you we can't offend anyone, everybody has to win in life, everyone needs to get an award, everyone, you know, you can't say anything bad to anyone, if you do, you have to apologize, and this really is the apology era. You can't do anything, you know, and the poor bastard, I mean... Yes, it was said in private, in confidence, you know, that he didn't know anyone was going to hear about it, and it, to, to be fair, you know, we've probably all said a few things that we, you know, probably didn't mean in private, you know, under our breath, or we, no one's around, we've all, probably all done that, but unfortunately, the whole world has heard what he said, and now Hulk Hogan has been shunned, and look, I'm not a... I didn't grow up in the Hogan era, obviously. I'm only 20 years old, so Hogan was uh, before my time. So, to me, Hogan was never one of my favorites, and I didn't really care for him all that much. You know, when he had the, the return run in 05 and yada, 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 and went to TNA and made that company god-awful and unwatchable. And Hogan there in TNA was, oh, he was cancer to TNA. So anything Hogan has done in the last 10 years has been god-awful. Awful. So, but I, having him come back in, you know, the ambassador role that he's in, comes back every six months, you know, hypes up the crowd, promotes something for the company, that was fine. And and, and actually, Hulk Hogan was going to be in uh, WWE Live in Australia in August, early August, so what, next week? Holy shit, I'm going to, so I'm going to the WWE next week, so that's something I haven't really talked about, probably we'll talk about that uh, next Tuesday, because I think it's on the Wednesday on the 5th, so I'll probably talk about that before I go, but yeah, so Hulk Hogan was scheduled to be there, so I was actually going to see Hulk Hogan for the first time in person, that was going to be kind of cool, you know, see a legend, whatever, whatever, so that was going to be kind of cool, so I'm a little disappointed about that, and, and to me, I just think this whole situation is crazy, but, um, you know, I kind of, I, I don't know, I I don't know really how to feel about it. Yes, I, I don't really condone what he did. I thought what he did was was horrible. Um, I just feel as though he's a little unlucky in the society that we're in right now. If this was probably, if this was John Cena, would it have been the same? I don't think so. Would he have been fired? Hell no. I mean, John Cena, they would have swept this under the rug. And Vince McMahon, you know, I love what they did. You know, Hulk Hogan. He came out and said Vince McMahon used the N-word on TV, which is true. He did that 10 years ago. And no one ever said anything about Vince McMahon. You know, they didn't really care. But, you know, apparently the WWE said that was the Vince McMahon character and not Vince McMahon himself. And it's just funny and ironic to me that WWE is probably one of the most racist companies I have ever seen in my time. We've got right now Naomi... 
you see her on Total Divas, she's just a normal person. You see her on WWE TV, she's all sassy, she's, you know, being all ghetto, she's got these fucking glasses that are, and these light up boots. It's just like, how stereotypical are they? They're just stereotypical black person gimmicks. They do this all the time in our truce a rapper just go on and on I know he's actually a rapper but it's just so many different instances I can you know I could think actually make up a list and go go through them all but you know who knows how long we're going to be here for you know crime time gangsters you know they rob people you know how many you know how often have we seen that you know it's just I know it's fictional characters but it's a play on real life and the WWE, they're so behind the times that, you know, this is probably what they think that black people truly are. And, you know, I'm sure maybe there's a tiny percentage that are, but realistically, no. So, you know, this is obviously a very touchy subject. I don't press... And honestly, if I say the wrong thing, I could be done. I could be gone. That's kind of the, the worrying thing of society right now. So if you say one slip up, you're gone. So... To me, even talking about this now, I'm kind of like, oh shit, if I say something wrong to offend someone, I'm gone because that's the society we're in. So, just going back to my point, the WWE itself is so stereotypically racist. They are a racist company. I mean, hell, their major championship, this is says it all, their major championship in their company, a black man has never held it. Only The Rock, now he's half black, so a fully black man has never held the WWE championship. Yes, the World Heavyweight Championship that they don't even consider. You go on their page, you look up WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I don't even think the World, the, the big gold belt, all the championship range from that are included. So yes, they are still recognized as a champion, but they're not the biggest one. And we all know the WWE Championship is the major prize. And a black man's never held it. So obviously the WWE, where do they think, oh, black people aren't a draw. You know, we need to appeal to all society. I don't know what their problem is. But for whatever reason, they haven't given their biggest prize to the to a black man. And even The Rock, you know, The Rock is an exception because he's just out of this world. But he had to be out of this world for them to give it to him. That's just, how ridiculous is that? It just baffles me that this is, you know, we've had plenty of good contenders. You know, I honestly think Mark Henry would have been the perfect time to do that. I mean, at least recently. You know, how believable do you want it to be? You know, during his... He had a, a good little run there and the whole of pain gimmick, it would have been fine. But no, we haven't seen it yet. I, I don't know why. I don't know when we ever will. Will we ever? I don't know. So it's just kind of funny to me in some aspects that that's the way the WWE treats Hulk Hogan, that they've shunned him and given him the Benoit treatment. After all, what did Hogan do? Yes, he said a racial word. But do you think you want to give him the same treatment as you did as a guy who murdered his family? Yeah, I think it's a little little extreme to me. So I'm not going to go on it for too much longer. But I will talk about Tough Enough and what's going to happen next on that show. Now, a lot of rumors about who's going to replace Hogan as a judge. And to me, the one guy I want to see replace him is Mick Foley. And now, I know a lot of rumors have been Ric Flair and Bret Hart or even rotating some judges in or even The Miz coming in and doing it. I just think think all those options are decent, but I think Mick Foley would be a good pick. I know Foley, yes, he doesn't look like, you know, he doesn't look that great on camera, and we all know how the WWE are like that, especially Kevin fucking Dunn. But to me, Mick Foley would be a good choice. He's He's been vocal about the show. He's obviously watched the show. He knows the characters. He knows who's on the show. And I think the guy honestly wants to make the show better, so I think he'd have some ideas to make the show better. Whether it's Ric Flair, would he have watched the show? Hell no. Would Bret Hart even watch the show? I don't think so. I think there's a chance, but I doubt it. But Ric Flair, I've listened to his podcast, and he just talks over the top of his guests. I mean, I like the podcast, but he just talks over the top of everyone. And the guy just doesn't shut up. He doesn't know when to stop. You know, he just keeps talking, keeps rambling, just keeps going and going and going. And a short, sharp show like Tough Enough that already struggles to get the content that they need to get across to the viewers, having a guy like Ric Flair ramble on for an extra 30 seconds or even a minute longer than he needs to doesn't really help the show. So as much as I'm a big fan of Ric Flair, I just don't think he's a good fit 
for the show at all. Bret Hart, on the other hand, yes, best career, best it was, blah, 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 blah. Great wrestler, knows what he's talking about. Just don't think he has the personality to drive that position because you've already got a great technical wrestler in Daniel Bryan in that spot. You've got the woman in Paige, who, by the way, I don't think she should have been there. I think Trish Stratus should have been in that role. That's for another story, another another another, another day. So you need a guy like Mick Foley, who's funny, who's got the personality, he's likable, everything like that. You need that in that spot. And The Miz, he's doing well with Tough Talk. Leave it there. Jericho, no. Um, a guy like, I mean, it's been, maybe people have been wanting Austin to come back. I don't think Austin's going to do it. I think the reason, if they wanted, they wanted Austin in the first place. So if they could have got Austin, they would have in the first place. So obviously he's not available. And having the judges come in and out, I mean, the trainers coming out in and out to be a judge, you know, what's the point of them being a trainer then? You know, yes, they have a, they, they should have a say, and I kind of agree on that, but I don't know. I probably would just keep it separate. I mean, the, and then again, the trainers don't really have much of a role. I mean, Billy Gunn kind of steers the ship and the rest of them don't. So at, if they can't get Foley, I would agree on rotating the trainers in and out to be a judge every week. So also Patrick getting eliminated is uh, a very big loss for the show but as I said last week this show scripted we all know it's reality TV before this show even started they probably picked out the winner it's clear you know that everyone they picked out a gimmick and a, what they want people to say you know we've seen some of the contestants say oh I didn't mean to say that they told me to say that so it's obviously they're getting told to say different things and that's how reality TV works they're told, okay, we want you to start a fight with, you know, Diana, okay? So, yeah, they obviously, they do this crap. You know, it's reality TV. It's not everything you see is legitimate. It's not real. You know, I'd say most of the show isn't real. So, Patrick, to me, they probably wanted, they in their mind, I can see them thinking this. Okay, the show's not doing that well in ratings. Let's have the, the favorite, the big name. Let's get rid of him and maybe that will increase interest. Ooh, who's going to win now? You know, anyone could win now. Who knows? You know, and we'll start doing all this. And really, it's just another example of the right person isn't winning the show. Patrick is by far the best person on the show. Now, Marta is improving. He's okay. Josh, he sucks. And Tanner... Tanner, to me... He's not a WWE guy. He, he's a, he's an MMA guy who's just coming on the show for a, you know a payday and you know perhaps I'll give this a shot if it works. It works. If it doesn't, oh well, I'll just go back and do what I was doing in the first place. So to me, we don't need someone who doesn't really want to be in the WWE. And a guy like Tanner, he's got no charisma at all. He is boring as hell, and he can't work. You know, yes, he's in good shape, but you know he's green as grass. Do you really want to invest three, four years in a guy who is a charisma vacuum? Why? What's the point? He hasn't got the size. He looks like Seth Rollins. Come on, let's not. So, at least to me, Patrick has a bit of personality. And I think he's 19 years old as well. So, he ca- could have a long career in the WWE. Three years time, he's be 22. He'd be trained. he would be ready to go. So, yeah, he could have a big, big future in the WWE. And I think... I think he will be signed. I think he's the one guy I can guarantee he will be signed. I think probably Diana will get signed from the women. And I think Sarah Lee is still winning the women's thing. And everyone's starting to get on the Sarah Lee bandwagon. I still think she sucks, so I don't care for her at all. So that's the tough talk. Tough tough enough, I should say. <laughs> I just said tough talk. This goes to show which one's probably more interesting. But... um I love how they made the whole episode of Tough Talk all about Patrick, and they eliminated the guy. Like, the whole damn thing was, oh my god, Patrick's gone, and I guarantee you on the next episode of Tough Enough, Tough Enough today, everything will be about Patrick. Holy crap, now that Patrick's gone, who's going to step up, blah, 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 blah. It's clearly, you know, Patrick is the golden boy of the show. You know, was he intended to win? No, I just think... They probably got a reality check. Okay, this guy's kind of popular. People are gravitating towards him. So they probably will give the guy a contract. And don't be surprised if we see Patrick come back 
in one of the, the last episodes and perhaps it's Tanner there, or perhaps it's Marta, one of the rivals that Patrick was with and he comes back and he takes him on in a challenge or something like that. They have to be Patrick. Don't be surprised if that happens. So, tough enough. I've been asked this week, am I still going to watch it? Yes, I'm still going to watch it. Because, you know, Total Divas and Tough Enough are on back to back. It's kind of like, okay, let's sit down for a couple of hours, watch this, and, you know, I still enjoy it. I still enjoy, definitely still enjoy it, but it's just kind of like a little disappointing to see where they're headed, in the, and I don't really see much of a future in anybody that's left in the show. So, last little bit of news, last little thing I want to talk about before we get to Raw. I know I've already gone on for quite some time, but, um, a bit of a change of pace anyway. We normally just talk about Raw. Let's, I think it's good to change it, change it up a little bit and get through some things before we get to Raw. Because there really isn't a lot to talk about about Raw. So this is a good thing. Let's get through the good stuff first. SummerSlam. Four hours long. Now, this surprised me. I really wasn't expecting this. So normally SummerSlam is just your typical three-hour show. WrestleMania, I believe, is four hours. Is it four or five? I think it's four hours normally and an extra hour makes it five with a pre-show kickoff show so we'll still call it four hours so SummerSlam finally stepping up to the plate and this should have happened a long time ago I think because I think SummerSlam they should have been trying to make SummerSlam into the second big show and not as big as WrestleMania but you know you know still a huge show in the last last couple of years of SummerSlam has been good before that it was pretty bad the last few SummerSlam has been hit and miss recently. So, I think SummerSlam making it into a four-hour event is a good thing. I don't know how big the arena is that they're going to, but I think they should start trying to go to a 30, 40, 50,000 seat arena. They're not going to get 80,000 for SummerSlam, but I think you get, could get 40 or 50,000. You build it up, you build the card up. And the problem with SummerSlam, in my opinion, is that they don't really have many feuds coming into this, coming into SummerSlam. We have Cena and Seth Rollins. The the world title match is just starting brand new. It's a fresh feud. And that, to me, seems like just filler. So that's not a good start. Brock and Taker, that's a big match. I'm looking forward to that. I think that's a good selling point. But other than that, you know, they don't really have much else to build the show on. So four hours of SummerSlam, I'm thinking, where are they going to get the excitement from? Where are they going to get these good matches from? Cesaro and, and Owens may be having a match. I think that's a good thing. Um, the tag team match we got was announced, so it's kind of like, oh, I don't know, man. I just think the card is going to be pretty weak, and for a four-hour show, I'm just kind of wondering if four hours is going to drag on. But maybe we'll have the same amount of matches, just make them longer. I know the Divas match is probably going to be pretty good at SummerSlam, so that's something to look forward to. And we'll talk more about the Divas when we get to Raw, but the Divas are really looking good at the moment. I'm really, really impressed with what they're doing. But, um, yeah, so SummerSlam doesn't really warrant four hours. I don't think so. If they're going to do four hours, if they're going to put this in a 45, 50,000 seat arena, which I think they should be doing, they need to build it up. And, you know, obviously having a lot of pay-per-views recently kind of took the wind out of the sail, but Battleground was okay but they should have probably brought a couple of feuds they had going on from Battleground. And they had the Cena and Owens thing culminate at Battleground. That was a horrible idea. I think they should have probably done that with the feud culminating at SummerSlam, and that would have been a much bigger. The rubber match, Cena, Owens, SummerSlam, yes, much bigger and much better than Owens, sorry, Rollins and Cena. And mind you, I'm still kind of dirty on what Cena did, you know, winning against Owens. You're having the two titles and two titles in one match instead of, you know, two titles and two 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 matches. So now, obviously, the IC titles lost a lot of steam. Ryback's been out. The US title stepped up. The US title is the number two title right now, easily. You could have had Cena drop the title to Owens, maybe perhaps perhaps have a rematch on Raw, not win. Then, okay, sure, Cena goes on next World Championship contender. He's had this great US title run. Okay, let's reward him with the. T- World title matchup. Maybe he wins another one contenders match. Whatever. Fine. But, the, you know, and then, of course, you have Owens versus Cesaro. Maybe, maybe if Dolph Ziggler's not back, you can make it a, a triple threat match. Or if not, just Owens and Cesaro. US title. How good would that be? 
amazing. But now that match, Owens and Cesaro, if that happens, doesn't have the title involved. It doesn't have that extra emphasis, that extra oomph to make the match more exciting and more appealing. So I just think they're missing a little trick there, making Cena and, and go for the world title while still being US champion. I've never been a fan of that, to be honest. I've never been a fan of a, a mid-card champion going after the world title. I think you should lose the title in some fashion, then move up. That's just me. You should use that momentum you've had. Not, I mean, yes, if you you put someone else over and you lose the title, then I guess you kind of lose a bit of momentum at the same time. But if it's done right, it doesn't matter. You should be able to elevate the guy to the same level as you without dropping any momentum, you know. You should, so Cena should have been able to elevate Kevin Owens to his level, so both guys come out even. So Cena can move up, Owens stays the same level, and other people can come around, come along and try to get to Owens' level. But instead, they've had Cena beat Owens, and it's pretty clear to me that Owens has dropped down the, the pecking order considerably. With Cesaro, he's just had no momentum for the last year or so as a singles, two years, three years as a singles. So he's down there to begin with. And he's moved up slightly in my eyes, but he's still probably a step below Owens and 15 steps behind Cena. So they had a chance to make Owens seem like a big deal and you could have had Cena move on to something else and have Owens keep the US title going and bring these other guys up to Owens. But instead, they've had Cena drop everything from the, you know move away from the US title, make all the guys that he was versing still seem like shit without making anyone else look good, and then he's going to go on and f- and fight Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. So it's just... I don't know. It just frustrates me. I, don't, I, I A lot of people... I got some comments last episode saying I was too negative, but geez, these are the things I'm negative about because it just leaves this situation, the US title, in a bad spot. You know, you've got these guys, Owens, Cesaro, Rusev, Bring in Ziggler, you know. You've got these four guys you could easily use who could easily start a rivalry and keep things going and keep the momentum there. They're not using that. Instead, these guys are going to be in two pointless matches each. You know, Rusev and Ziggler, that god-awful rivalry will probably finally end at SummerSlam. And then Cesaro and Owens, yes, great match, but what's the point? You know, these guys don't really have a storyline. You know, you put the US title involved, okay, easy to go, easy to make some kind of a storyline. Instead, just nothing. So, I think they're missing a real trick there. But other than that, SummerSlam as well, just not a lot to really look forward to. There's not a lot of big matches out there that can really happen for SummerSlam. So, four-hour show, it's a risk. Will it pay off? I don't think so. I just don't think it has the card to, or even the potential to support a four-hour show. Alright, so let's finally get into Monday Night Raw. I'm going to really... I've talked about a few things already that I wanted to cover, but there's not really a lot to talk about. So I wanted to just kind of point out how good the Divas have been. You know, I really enjoyed that they did that little minute, two-minute thing on Sasha Banks as well. Kind of explained who she is, what she's all about. That's something they have not done. Something they needed to do. A nice little video package kind of sums up what she's all about, why she's called the boss works, it works, it's simple, it's a great idea, thank goodness they did that, because a lot of casual people, you don't tune in NXT, I don't even watch NXT, and I'm a, I'm considered, a, I guess, a hardcore wrestling fan, I don't even watch re- NXT, I just kind of stick to Monday Night Raw, because then I'm kind of, you know, like I've talked about this before, I watch Raw, and I'm kind of done, you know, my, my wrestling quota for the week is done, and so NXT to me, yes, I'm very much so aware, and I've seen plenty of matches of it, but you know, I haven't really watched NXT every single week intently to know what she's all about. So a little quick highlight package of her, what she's all about, what she can do, certainly works, and that will definitely uh, help her just that little bit more. And I think they should probably do that for all the three new debutantes, and this is something they should do more often for everyone that comes up, because they just kind of throw people off from NXT and just expect you to know who they are. You know, what if I've never watched NXT before? I've watched Raw every single week. And I've watched every single week for the last 10 years, but I've never watched NXT. And they bring up Charlotte, or they bring up Becky Lynch. Who the fuck is Becky Lynch? Why do I care about her? But they're trying to portray it as, holy shit, this is Becky Lynch. She's from NXT. She's amazing. But how do, I've never seen anything about her. What's so amazing about her? We don't know. So a quick little video package for Sasha Banks was a nice little way to do it. Something they should probably think about doing 
every single week. Do one a week on each new diva, and just kind of you know before SummerSlam, we'll know a little bit more about each diva and kind of what their story is, what they're all about, and that'll help us uh, enjoy the characters a little bit more. And it's, it's kind of like it's pretty simple, you know. In big TV shows, I've talked about this before, but in big TV shows, they don't bring in these new characters and just not explain who the hell they are. They they talk about them, you know. They introduce the characters and they give it a little bit of background, you know, what they're all about, what's their connection. But in WWE, this is still, they say it all the time, this is a television show, this is not real, this is not reality, this is a TV show, but yet they don't use the TV show elements to their show, they just bring in these people and say, yep, this is uh, Charlotte, this is Sasha Banks, or, you know, you go back, this is Adam Rose, you know, this is... The Ascension, you know, the Ascension, they're bad, they're tough, bad dudes. Okay, what else do we know about them? Neville, he's the man that gravity forgot. We know that, but what else about it? We don't know. (laughs) So, they don't really introduce their characters very well, and if they do, they don't spend enough time doing it, in my personal opinion. But, nice little thing what they did this week on Raw with the Divas, and they are doing very well. Two matches a week again. How long will that last? I'm not sure, but things are looking up. The Divas are getting time. They're getting more than two minutes. They're getting a, a couple segments a week. They are doing very well. So, and there's still, you, th- you notice it. They can put all this diva stuff in, and there's still so much time for everything else. Amazing, isn't it? How much filler did we have on this week's Raw? How many commercial breaks did we have on this week's Raw? They dragged everything out. Replay after replay after replay. It just makes you wonder. They could have been using... They can simply use this extra time. Stop using it for replays and use it for building in these other things. It's doable. It it can happen. They just have to, you know, lift their finger and actually do it. It's possible. But um, one sad thing that's happened... You know, they elevate one, you take down the other. The WWE Tag Team Division, oh my goodness, it's done, it's over. Lucha Dragons, Lost Matadors, they, you're telling me they are the top two contenders for these tag titles. How bad is this division? The Lucha Dragons, when was the last time we've seen these guys on Raw every single week winning all these matches, doing so well, we've never seen it. Lost Matadors, when was the last time anybody gave a shit about them? Never. When was the last time they looked like a dominant tag team? Unless this is on SmackDown, the world that I do not want to ever venture in, I don't know, because these guys, they're not existent, and if they are, they no one has ever given a shit, so why, why bother? I mean, the Usos and c- cannot come back faster, Eric Rowan cannot come back faster, Unfortunately, Tyson Kidd, he won't be back for a long time, so that tag team is virtually done. There's a lot of talk that they may bring up some other tag teams, and I don't even know if that's a good idea because the tag division is so bad right now. Do I really want these teams that have potential to get squandered and squashed and just taken down to their level? Probably not. You know, they had a, they had a good opportunity with the Ascension, and they just ruined them. The primetime players were very funny this week. I really enjoyed Titus O'Neil on commentary. I enjoyed Titus O'Neil's commentary. And that was the only thing I was really focusing on, more so than the match, because I didn't give a shit about the match. I was more focused on what Titus O'Neil was saying to JBL, and they were talking about a Puerto Rican bull or something. I don't know. Who was the first Puerto Rican bullfighter or whatever the hell it is? I don't know. See, I, I don't even... I, I think the Lucha Dragons won, you know? I don't even know if that's the match. I don't even know if primetime players are going to face the Lucha Dragons or if it's probably going to be a triple threat match because the New Day are killing it. The New Day are carrying this division. Funny, entertaining, amazing. New Day, awesome. 10 out of 10. They crack me up every week. They are amazing. Love the New Day. But they've been beaten by the primetime players so many times, you know, like, what, three pay-per-views in a row? You know, can we really do that match again? Probably not. So, unfortunately, we have to bring in another tag team, and all the other tag teams are just so irrelevant that it just, it's not the same, you know? It's not like we have all these great tag teams trying to fight, you know, trying to fight for this spot and coming up and doing real well. No, we haven't got anything going at all, you know? We're bringing in these other tag teams because we're desperate, and we're probably going to throw the new in, new day in there just to make it somewhat passable. 
So expect a triple threat match at SummerSlam. Oh man, it's just the the tag division is so done. And I and the thing is, the funny thing is, the Dudley Boys are sitting there on the sidelines waiting to be signed, and they don't want to bring them in. How good would it be just to spice it up and give the tag team some kind of interest and some new life in a point for the tag division that is so bad right now. They need all the help they can get. Anything, anything at all. God, even bring back crime time, for God's sake. Any tag team at all. They need something because this tag division is horrible. And I'm a big fan of tag team wrestling. I've always been a fan. I've always loved watching tag teams you know, tag team feuds are always interesting. Tag team matches are always fun. But now, tag team wrestling is the worst part of the WWE. And that's sad. Very sad. So, the other thing that's really... I kind of touched on this a little bit before. But Kevin Owens... A lot of talk about him perhaps no longer being seen as a main eventer by some people. And some people want him to be a mid-carder. Some people want him to be a main eventer. It's, they're going back and forth between them. So, at the moment, I just guess Kevin Owens is... Uh, Joining old Rusev and uh, Dolph Ziggler and Cesaro and you name it, in the world of obscurity, uh, Damien Sandow's there. You know, well, we all know Curtis Axel. Uh, the Axel Mania thing's done now. So there's a lot of these guys that have met John Cena and uh, gone, or you know, there's a lot of guys just doing nothing, and it's just Kevin Owens. Is, I honestly thought of him as a big deal. Him beating Cena, I thought. Straight away, Kevin Owens was on the top level. To me, in my mind, when I saw Kevin Owens, I thought, this guy is a big deal. This guy is the man. And now, since Cena beat him, I think this guy is shit. I don't see this guy as anything... Uh, do I see him better than Dolph Ziggler? No, I don't. Do I see him better than Bad News fucking Barrett? Only a little bit. <laughs> I mean, anything's better than Bad News Barrett. But And finally, yes, I had to get my Bad News Barrett hate rant and every every episode I'm probably going to say something mean about Bad News Barrett or King Barrett or whatever the fuck he's called let's let's try and make that a, a, a ritual you know always uh, hate on Bad News Barrett but anyways so Kevin Owens is he is he anything anymore no because he's lost so Kevin Owens has fallen so far down can he recover uh, we'll have to wait and see but um, obviously, that's pretty much it. Cesaro and Owens, I kind of touched on this before, but I think this is a good move. I think this is something that these two guys really need. Make it a number one contender match. Make Cesaro just beat Owens and just have Cena and Cesaro. For the US title at Night of Champions, just do it. We've seen Owens and Cena so many times now that I don't really want to see that again. I honestly wouldn't mind seeing... Let's say Rusev beats Dolph Ziggler. I wouldn't mind seeing... Cesaro and Rusev have a feud. I think that would be pretty cool. But then again, and then I guess you could tw- you could switch it. You know, Kevin Owens moves on. The Dolph Ziggler has a feud. I wouldn't mind that. Two decent mid card feuds because I feel as though Cena. I'll probably talk about what I think about Cena in a second or later on. But what I think of Cena right now is I just think he won't be involved in the US or in the mid card for a while. So I think these guys probably should just fight it out. These guys, to me. I like the top four mid carders right now, so I think these guys should just fight it out, feud it out for the next couple of months, just kind of tear it up and really try and hope that the WWE finally notice and then, you know, maybe do something with them finally. But um, so Cesaro and Owens is a good move. I'm happy about that. Main event: Seth Rollins tapped out to John Cena. Why? I don't know. I mean, normally Seth Rollins has someone to help him out. But Seth Rollins tapped out the champ, tapped out cleanly. No questions asked to John Cena, who had a fucking horrible nose. Seth Rollins got him square in the nose with a knee. I think Seth Rollins might be in a little bit of trouble, you know, a bit of heat backstage because Cena's nose looks horrible. But um, I'm just going to say this. Don't be surprised at SummerSlam when John Cena walks out with the belt. I'm warning you all right now. If you think Seth Rollins is walking out with the belt, you're going to be disappointed. This whole Seth Rollins thing, I've enjoyed his work, but attendances are down, ratings are down. We all know who the WWE calls when the ratings are doing bad. So they've given Seth Rollins a number of months. They've really given him the chance to really kind of turn things around and and become a decent champion. But 
the way he's been booked in the same sense, you know, ha- have they really, I don't know, they've given him the time, but they haven't really given him the booking to really make him into a great champion. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is it. Cena breaks the record, goes to 16 times, beats Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. And yeah, because why not? Why not? But uh, yeah, so Cena broke his nose, looked bad. That's really all I've got to say about Raw. There's not a lot. There's not a lot going on. I mean, I think this week was just a bit of a filler show. No Lesnar, no Taker, as I predicted. Les is on next week's show, so that'll be something interesting. They didn't even have Paul Heyman come out this week. I kind of knew that they would just have the the uh, the video package. I knew that was going to happen, so I'm not too surprised. But um, yeah, very much a filler show. Not a lot happened, and uh, yeah. So Monday Night Raw is done. But uh, what is Brendan playing this week? I picked up uh, Trials Fusion. So Fusion, yeah, I think it's Fusion. So. I got a chance to uh, to play Trials Fusion. Um, my when my friend came over, as I spoke about earlier on the show. My friend came over. He brought over Trials, and uh, first time I played it, I actually really enjoyed it. So I played the multiplayer, and it was pretty fun. So I picked it up from the bargain bin. So I haven't played it yet by myself, but I'm going to be playing that, and that's really what I've all been playing this week. I haven't really had a chance to game a lot. You know, I've had opportunities to play with my friend you know, play games there, but I haven't really, you know, gamed personally, um, so I haven't really been playing all too much, uh, I played a bit of FIFA again, I'm probably going to pick up the new FIFA when it comes out, I think it's time for me to finally buy another FIFA, the last one I bought was, uh, FIFA 13, so I know a lot of people, I know a lot of, uh, UK listeners all love their FIFA, and it'd be pretty cool to, uh, play some FIFA with all you guys, so I know a lot of people on my friends list or on my forums already, play a lot of FIFA, and I've played a few of them already, and a lot of fun, so I probably will finally pick up the next FIFA, but uh, yeah, we played a bit of that, uh, I'm not, fortunately, I'm not all that great at FIFA, so I've got a little bit of work to do there, but uh, I kind of enjoy it, so I do, definitely will uh, probably pick up the new one, but um, yeah, so, not a big week in gaming, as I did last week, I kind of turned this into, what is Brendan doing, but um um, the Ashes, the test match, cricket, for all you people who don't know, starts on Wednesday, I think, I'm hoping, which is going to be amazing, I love cricket, I've been waiting finally, yes, it's back, so I cannot wait for that, so my gaming time is probably going to be squandered, gone, you know, forgotten, and I'm not probably not going to game all that much, especially during night time, obviously, during the day, I probably will, but um, at definitely night time, I won't be, so it's all going to be devoted to watching this this game and uh the series at the moment is one all best of five so this is a big one so this is going to determine in my opinion who wins the series so who wins this test match i'm calling it right now wins the series and i know all you guys have just switched out and turned off so get back into it because it's time for some voicemails hi brendan my name is jeremy bash and my question to you is do you think there is a way kevin owens can recover from his WWE battleground loss to john cena is there a way he can recover from this crap and do you think it is needed for john cena to feud with seth rollins for the WWE title can he recover yes definitely but three months three months of great work building kevin owens up to be this new future top heel company gone so, to recover Kevin Owens right now will take at least six months. Six months of solid booking, winning a lot of feuds, beating Cesaro, beating Ziggler's, beating Randy Orton's, beating these guys to recover him to where he kind of was. And even then, will he still be in that position where he was? I don't know. So, three months of good work all undone, just so Cena can have his win, just so Cena can move on to SummerSlam, and six months is going to probably be required. Hell could even take twelve months. He's going to have to big, going to have to feud with a big name, and probably going to be Randy Orton. Like they had a match on Raw, probably going to have to be Randy Orton. Have a feud with him, three month feud with Randy Orton, and beat him for anyone to kind of go. Okay, all right, Kevin Owens, not too bad. Okay, let's. He could be a champion. So he's going to have to do something big. Going to have to feud with someone big to get himself back over to that point. As for your next question. Is Seth Rollins and John Cena needed? No, like I said earlier on the show, you know, Cena is probably more needed to kind of, like, if they're going to do this match, Cena should have dropped the title. Champion versus champion is not needed. 
Seth Rollins and John Cena, we've already seen it a lot of times already, but it just goes to show there's no one else. If it's not John Cena, who the hell is it going to be? I mean, Daniel Bryan thinks he can wrestle, thinks he's cleared, but the WWE doesn't think so, so it could have been Daniel Bryan, but they don't, they don't want him. Who the hell's, who else? Randy Orton? God, no. Ambrose has seen this enough. There's nobody else. So John Cena's really the only alternative at this point. So, yes, it kind of has to happen. Hi, Brendan. I'm Jacob from New Brunswick, Canada, and otherwise known as Jack M. Miller from the forums or JCM Miller. My question for you is, Last week you said Baron Corbin may debut to have a match at SummerSlam. If he did, what other rival rivalries would you see him having? Thanks. Bye. Well, I said that Baron Corbin was going to come back as a member of the White family and be the third man to replace Eric Rowan, and I thought that was a good fit. I thought that was going to work. Now, there's been some rumors that that may not happen. Maybe Corbin won't be called up, but I don't think Corbin as a singles would work. So him as a tag team coming in as the Wyatts, obviously, you feud it out with the, what they're doing right now, Roman and Ambrose. By the way, was was Roman Reigns on Raw this week? I don't recall. Maybe I missed that because I was, I did miss 20 minutes of the show. I think I, when I did miss it, I think Bray Wyatt was on. I missed the, the Luke Harper Bray Wyatt thing. So maybe I missed that, but... um. Yeah, so what they're going to do there, obviously they're going to have the feud with with Ambrose and and Reigns probably. Where are they going to bring Sting in? I have no idea, but they'll do that. And then I guess maybe you can do what they did, but do it right. You know, have Rowan, instead of Rowan, it's Corbin, but you have Harper and Corbin go in the tag division and come out for the titles, probably beat the prompt some players and beat them for the titles. I think that could work. I think Corbin as a tag team guy could work, but as a singles, definitely not. So... The future feuds I see him with, anything to do with the tag team division right now, you know, feud it out with the tag titles, New Day, Prime Sun players, yeah. What's up, Brendan? It's Rashawn, or Innovator YT from the forums here, um, from Maryland, 14. I was wondering, I was going to ask you, how would you like to see Ultima Lucha pan out, or what are your, uh, what should I say... What's your opinion on the card? I know it's a phenomenal card. Um, I just can't wait to see the actual show. I'm pretty much intrigued with the Seven Medallions thing and what they had Phoenix try and do uh, this past episode. So I was just going to get your opinion on it, how you thought the card was going to go down. Good to see some uh, people in the forum sending in some questions and sending in the voicemails. But um, Ultima Lucha, I will be watching it. I haven't watched Lucha Underground for a while. I've... No, I wouldn't really say I've been keeping tabs with what's been going on, but I'm aware of a few things. I know the card. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I know some of the matches I'm really looking forward to. Uh, obviously, Mundo at El Patron looks great. The Van- Vampira match, I'm very much intrigued in. I think the the the, uh, the main event, the Puma match, I think that'd be pretty cool. So I think a lot of matches on the show will be really, really fun. I think I'm definitely going to enjoy it. So I'm definitely, definitely tuning in. And obviously, it's the season finale. This is the one you want to tune in. So I want to kind of get back into Lucha Underground. I want to kind of um, rewatch, well, not rewatch, but you know, go back and watch some of the older ones, and kind of get in tune with it again, and um, know what's been going on, and understand the build up towards the big one. And then, uh, yeah. So I've heard the show was really good. I've heard some of the matches were amazing. So I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm definitely going to be uh, watching it. So. I know Lucha, Under- Lucha Underground is going to be back for season two, and uh, I, I listened to Johnny Mundo on Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast, and he kind of kind of motivated me to watch the show again. He's talking about how passionate these guys are and how much he's really enjoying Lucha Underground, and that to me is a great thing. It's great to see the work is working there, really enjoying it. I've I've promoted Lucha Underground before. I've said how great it was, and I and I feel kind of bad because I kind of fell off it a little bit. I stopped watching it. But uh, every time I watch it, I just love it. I just kind of never get around to watching it. And I guess that's why Raw is, you know, doing so well for a lot of people. Because it's just kind of in tune with us. It's just a chore. And Raw, everyone's talking about it. So it's so easy to keep up with the product. In Lucha Underground, not as many people are talking about it. You have to kind of find a few a few people that are kind of into it, you know, and ch- chat about it with them there. But it's not as mainstream. It's not as, you know, easily accessible. 
So to me, Lucha Underground, I kind of forget about it sometimes. And I, and I, and I would honestly forget to watch it every week because I just, it's just not in tune to my brain yet, but I definitely love it. I definitely enjoy it. Every time I watch it, like I said, I have a great time. So Lucha, Ultima Lucha is going to be freaking awesome. Alrighty, so that's all the voicemails we have this week. Once again, I just want to kind of point out a few bad microphones, a lot of feedback coming in, some background noise. So if you guys are going to send in a voicemail, try and fix that for me. Some of them I couldn't use this week because it was just really bad. So unfortunately, I know it's it's hard. Some of you guys don't have a great microphone, but if you can, just try and use the best microphone you can and uh, keep the quality good for me so I can kind of use it on the show. So uh, we still have plenty of other questions to come from the YouTube and the uh, forums questions. So this first one comes from Alfonso Henrique, or you know, you know, Henrique. His question is, well, he has two questions. How do you think CM Punk will do in the UFC, and do you think he will ever come back to the WWE? I think CM Punk will do fine, because the reason why he's only going to face bums. He's not going to face anyone of any credibility, any name, because why should he? First fight, why is he going to face, you know... The, the US, the, the middleweight champion, why is he going to do that? He won't because he's a rookie. First fight, they don't put first fight guys with, you know, top guys. They just don't do that. So he's going to face no name guys. He's going to face rookies just like him, you know. So I think CM Punk will face a guy. He's going to win his first fight. UFC, we, you could say what do you want about it, but UFC to some degree is fixed. Come on. Every sport is a bit fixed. Every sport, you know, is a little bit questionable at times. UFC, it has a lot of elements of the WWE in it. It has a lot of elements of the showbiz. So, yes, it is a martial art. But to me, they're going to make sure CM Punk wins. There's no way in hell CM Punk loses. If he does, he's done. Forget about it. They will not... He will never fight again. If he loses his first fight, forget about it. He will... The only chance he'll fight again is in Bellator. Fuck any other no-name promotion. He will not fight in the UFC again. And do I think he'll come back to the WWE? They all come back, don't they? Just about every single person that said, I'm never coming back, has come back. If the WWE wants you back and they're willing to accept you back, they will. Because what is Sam... Sam Punk going to have a couple fights in the UFC. Where, where will he be in three, four years' time? He'll probably be off the off the scale of the earth. You know, we don't off the face of the earth. We don't know where the hell he'll be. Maybe he'll he'll write a couple of comics and he'll you know appear at Comic Con every year. But he won't really be doing anything of note. And there is a lot of money, in my opinion, of a of a one more match with CM Punk. You know, a one more big WrestleMania match. I think there's money there. So Vince McMahon, Triple H. I know Triple H is not a big fan of CM Punk. Apparently. But if Vince, Vince McMahon can put aside the differences for making money, wouldn't be surprised. Next one comes from Miguel Ciso. I think I've kind of butchered his name, but I'll try, give it a go. His question is, do you think they're going to bring back the, the World Heavyweight Championship? So the second belt, the big gold belt. Jeez, a lot of you guys asked me this question this week, and a lot of questions about the brand split this week as well. Look, I don't want to see it back. I've said this before. I think the one world title is the go, because... You got one big title. That's what everyone should be fighting for. You know, the solution to this is make the other two titles that they've got, the IC and the US title, more meaningful. Three, four years ago, the US title was absolutely shit. No one gave a flying fuck. In fact, it was never defended. I mean, I remember when Ambrose had the title, he defended it like four times in like six months. You know, it's just terrible what they did with the titles. Now they're trying to make something of the US title, and I think they've done well. The IC title, unfortunately, injuries have kind of ruined any chance of that happening. But I think the, the IC title will come back and do better. So now they're doing something with those titles, there's no need. You just elevate one of those titles, and it, it will take time. It will take 12 months before people go, oh, yeah, the U.S. title, that's a great title. If you get the U.S. title, you're you're going to be the next big, big thing. And that's what those titles should be. I always thought the IC title should be the stepping stone to the world title. And that's how I do it in my universe mode, for example. If he wins the IC title, he's right there. He's so close to that, that world title. Wins the US title, so close to the W title. But obviously, there's only one world title. So if he wins the win the IC title, you're so close. And the US title, I always thought should be the step below the IC. I think IC should be upper mid-card, US title just mid-card. But obviously, they probably want to make just both upper mid-card. So that kind of leaves a lot of space, like... You got a guy like Fandango, uh, dare I say it, Bad News Barrett, Adam Rose, those 
waste of time. Those guys not really doing much of this kind of fighting over nothing, not, not really going anywhere. That's why the US title was kind of good for that, because then you could have these mid-carders going after it. Had the IC title with the upper mid-carders, like a Ziggler's and your Rusev's, your Owen's. Those guys going for that, and then you have the world title. You don't need a second world title, in my opinion. I just think it's overkill. And look at the last five years of the, of the second world title. Guys like Jack Swagger, The Big Show, Sheamus, Mark Henry, Alberto Del Rio. So many guys that you would never win the world title, the WWE Championship. We're holding that title. It just was not good. It was not good. I'm glad it's gone. I think you guys are all forgetting about how bad it was, how bad that title got. It was a mid-card title. Opened the show every single week, uh, every pay-per-view. It's just not good. Not good at all. We don't need it back. Next one comes from Joe Levy. Do you think the WWE might want to put the WWE World World Heavyweight Championship on John Cena so he can carry them through their down period after SummerSlam? That's exactly right. The ratings are down... I can see in their minds, who do we call? Call John Cena. He's he's our savior, our super, superman, our superhero. John Cena will fix all our problems. No, he will not. It, this, the ratings will be exactly the same, if not worse. John Cena, in 2015, in my opinion, is not the draw that he once was. Yes, will he, people who are diehard Cena fans, will they be happy? They'll probably attend a few extra house shows. Yeah. But in terms of ratings, I think we're just all ready for something different, something new and something exciting. And the WWE just, they give it, they give us a little taste of it and they take it away from us. You know, they gave us a taste of Kevin Owens. Yes, this guy's awesome. This guy's great. Took it away from us. So they take, gave us a little bit of Dean Ambrose, took it away from us. That's what they're like. And honestly, they just have to invest the time. They just have to invest the time, give this someone a chance, whether it's an Ambrose, you name it, give someone a chance, and then give them the title. And, you know, give them six months, see how they do. I mean, what's really the worst that can happen? I mean, the ratings have, the ratings have never been good for the last many years. So it doesn't matter a scene, it doesn't matter who it is, just take a chance. There's no real risk. Another one from Miguel. Oh, man, that, this name is too, too hard for me. Miguel Ciso, when do you think the WWE are going to bring up Enzo Amore and Big Cass up from NXT? A lot of talk about these two guys actually being getting called up very, very soon, and that's what I kind of alluded to earlier on when I was talking about the tag division. Honestly, you bring them up, like I said, who do you feed them with? Lucha Dragons, Matadors, Ascension, who? Who? No one. There's no one to feed them with. So you're going to bring a tag team up, Yes, it will make things a little more interesting, but you want to bring them up when you have something for them to do. You just don't want to bring them up just for the sake of bringing them up. That's exactly what they did with the Lucha Dragons. They brought them up for the sake of bringing them up. You know, they said, "Okay, we need an we need another tag team. These guys are doing have done everything they can do in NXT. Let's just bring them up." And nothing happened. Essentially, I brought them up, gave them a push for two weeks. Done. You want to bring these guys up when they have something to do, and they give them a chance to actually get over. This one comes from Jack Miller. What do you think of Adam Rose of all people? Rumored to join the Wyatt family. I think it is stupid. I think you're right. Adam Rose, whether it's Leo Kruger, which is apparently the rumor, or Adam Rose, you name it, him and the Wyatt family, done, done dusted, done deal, over. Wyatt family, I will not give a shit. This is horrible. Why? Adam Rose, I mean, Leo Kruger was a failed gimmick in NXT. There's a reason why they changed his gimmick in NXT, because it failed. So why do you want to bring back, resurrect a failed gimmick and try and put it with a guy in Bray Wyatt who's struggling, a guy, Luke Harper, who's been irrelevant? You want to bring that in and make this group even worse than it probably already is? It's not a good thing. These guys need something positive. These guys need someone, if they're going to bring someone in with momentum. Now, I don't know much about Baron Corbin. He's... You know, hit and miss. Apparently, he can't work. He's not ready. But it's still a better option at this point. At least he has a kind of a size. You know, Adam Rose just... He doesn't fit the build. Doesn't... He can't talk. He can't work, in my opinion. He's just... No charisma. He just offers nothing. You know, they've already had Eric Rowan for so long offering really nothing... I mean, is that what they want? The third guy to really just kind of stand there and offer nothing? Adam Rose won't be able to do that. He's not an enforcer. He doesn't have the intimidator factor. He's not big. 
if they're going to have someone who can't work, who can't do all this and this, they need someone like Eric Rowan who has at least has the size and kind of fits the bill, fits the mold of the White family. Adam Rose does not. Adam Rose should just stay home. To follow that one up, Blades. Blades 4 wants to know, will the White family go into your shit list if Adam Rose joins it? Yes, I'm done. I will uh, tune out. I will skip the White family because Adam Rose in the White family will be just a colossal failure. Horrible idea. Bailey 14. He's decided not to use the potato this week. He's gone back to the text. What should Sting do at SummerSlam? Should he be in a match? And if so, who? Who with? Or should he just interfere in a match? If so, what match? I'm kind of sold on the six man. I, I, I like the idea of Sting, Reigns, Ambrose. I know it's weird. I know it's out of the blue. It doesn't make any sense. But I want to see Sting wrestle at SummerSlam. If he's going to be there, let him wrestle. Let's not have him interfere. Let him come in, get it, hit his shit at the end. Come in for two and a half minutes to go in the match. Hit his shit and win the match. Get the pin. Move on. Sting comes in. Let him, if hell, if Adam Rose is in the goddamn match, let him come in and pin Adam Rose. That's fine with me. I'm happy with that. If that's their p- big plan, well, I'm, I'm okay with that. I uh, Let everyone, let Reigns hit his finishes. Ambrose hit all his finishes. Sting hit his finishes all on Adam Rose. And, and he just takes the pin and just gets murdered. I'd be okay with that. But if Sting's going to be there, put him in a match. If not, well then, if he's going to interfere... He's going to interfere to set up something down the line. Not just interfere and not do anything for the next six months. If he's going to interfere, you've got to set up something, whether it's at Survivor Series or even at these other pay-per-views. You've got to do something with him. Next up comes from Blaze 4 again. Do you think Do you think Cena will lose his United States Championship before SummerSlam in an open challenge? And if so, who do you think that may be? I, don't honestly, I honestly don't think Cena's going to lose this championship until he retires. Who the hell is going to beat John Cena? I don't know. I really don't know. I'd, I would not be surprised if he holds his title to WrestleMania because there is absolutely no one, in my opinion, other than Finn Balor that could come in and beat Cena for the title. Kevin Owens was the only guy. I mean, can they build Cesaro up for the next six months and have him win the belt? Yes, but if Cesaro came out there and beat him right now, would anyone really believe that or, you know, believe that? <laughs> believe that? I don't know, man. Cena is so far above everyone in that mid card. It's just a joke now. And Cena, don't be surprised if he's holding two titles. He'll have to wear two T-shirts, saying the champ is here with the WWE and the champ is here with the US. Or maybe he'll split split in half. You know, he'll wear, you know, one side of his shirt will be the WWE title, the other side will be the US title. You know, he'll come out with another fifteen shirts. Everyone will be happy. WWE will be raking in the money, and they'll be thinking, oh, everything is saved. John Cena is the champion. Everything is great. Our merchandise merchandise sales are up all as well. And that's just how the W rolls. Next up, from Sandman. What are your opinions on Stephanie McMahon wanting to book a gay W character, which will most likely be Darren Young? I don't see it happening. I think the W they haven't embraced Darren Young's gay persona. Well, not persona, but way of life. He's gay way of life. Um, I know the whole gay marriage thing is now legalized over there, so it it's accepted more than ever. So if they were ever going to do it, now would be the time. But what would be, what would be the point? And I, I don't think people would really respond all that great. I think I think a lot of people, especially you know older people, are kind of accepted. And they have this okay, gay marriage, fine. But I don't think a lot of wrestling fans would really accept or gravitate to a gay character on TV. After all, this is a male soap opera and you look at the percentage of people that are probably straight males would that really fit the mold would it really work I don't think so now I wouldn't have a problem with it you know that's fine you know but to me I personally wouldn't really want to see it because I don't think I don't think it's going to work I wouldn't it wouldn't connect with me I'm not I'm not I don't swing that way so it wouldn't really connect with me I wouldn't really draw me in I really wouldn't be cheering for the guy because I wouldn't really see it so maybe if you come in as a like a gay heel and you know everyone that's anti anti or homophobic I should say you know he's cursing them all out or he's trying to push his gay morals onto everyone or something I don't know like something stupid like that you know that's the only really thing I can see that might slightly work but even then 
that's a stretch. So, yes, she said she's open to doing it, but will it happen? I don't think so. Final question today comes from Tim... Well, uh, Timone, Timone, Timone. What's your opinions on the brand split? Now, like I said, we did have some brand split questions. I decided to answer it this week. Personally, I think it's a great idea and they should bring it back, meaning more superstars will be showcased and SmackDown will actually get views. And the, also, the draft is my favorite night of the year. Well, you think about it. Look at the roster right now. How many main eventers do we have? What, four, five, six? You split that apart and then you got three. Well, there you go. That's it. You're right there. The brand, they just don't have enough top talent. They don't have enough stars to warrant a split and to make both shows exciting enough. Monday Night Raw is a drag already. If they brought Raw back to two hours, made SmackDown a big thing, and had the two had to separate the titles, everything like that, it might work. But like I said, the tag division's done. So if you split those titles, it wouldn't work. The mid-card is so all over the place. Who knows? And the world title, it's just... No. It's so, at the moment, the brand split just wouldn't work. It it worked in 2003 because you look at the roster. You look at the roster and you compare that roster to now. Ask yourself, does the 2015 roster stack up? No, it does not. So, let's just let the brand split stay dead for a few more years. If things improve... Then we'll think about it, but it's still a long way away. I'm a huge fan of it. I love the brand split. My favorite time as a fan because I started watching when the brand split was in full full force. So to me, I always was a huge fan of it. And I love the SmackDown Raw. Hell, if the brand split comes back, yes, small SmackDown versus Raw. I'm happy, I'm happy with that. I'm okay with that. But at the moment, it just would not work. So let's put it to bed. Let's leave it alone for a while. Perhaps in a few years' time, we can think about it again. That's all the questions we had this week for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Let's Talk Tuesdays. Of course, if you did enjoy it, make sure you hit the like button on the YouTube or if you're on iTunes, make sure you leave a rating as well as that Spreaker. Leave a love heart. Yes, show your love right now to Let's Talk Tuesdays and uh, keep up the support. Keep sharing the show. Big week last week. Let's hope we can keep the momentum going. Let's Talk Tuesdays is doing very, very well. I'm very, very excited about the future of the show. Very, very happy. Once again, I want to apologize for the lack of uploads. Bear with me for the next week after we get that week out of the way. Things are going to be cool. We're going to start a new series of Here Comes the Pain soon. More GMO. Backlash is going to be big. So if you haven't already, go on the website, brendanplace.com. Check out the WWE SmackDown vs. Rule 2007 page. It looks cool. I'm really proud about it. I'm very excited to kind of give you guys some more content on the website. That's in the in the plans right now. I'm hoping I can do that. I know I spoke about it last week, but um, very, very happy. So if you want to share this around to your friends, make sure you do that by uh, tweeting it out, uh, sharing on Facebook, sharing on everything, you name it. Let's do it. Keep supporting the show. I mean, you can even share it to your Google Plus page that absolutely no one will ever read. You can do that. Everything, Everything is okay by me. So keep it up. Keep up the support, and I'll keep the episodes coming next week. Should be a good episode. I mean, there was a lot to talk about today, so I hope you guys did enjoy this one. And um, make sure you leave some comments. And of course, leave your questions for next week's episode in the YouTube comment section on this episode 65. And, of course, in the forums, brandonplace.com, forward slash forums, or in the voicemails on the website. I'm out of here, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>